Let's move on to monsters! My uh, my monster list, I'm not gonna lie, is very normy, but it's uh, I think it's just the classics during the the spooky season. Can't go wrong with the classics. Would you like to start off, or would you want me to? Yes, I can kick us off. My first recommendation for this is also debatably a monster movie, but I consider it technically a monster movie. The scariest quote unquote monster movie I've ever seen is Hellraiser. The box. You opened it. We came. It's just a puzzle box! Oh no. It is a means to summon us. Oh yeah. So I, I'm sure, you know, Hellraiser, not new information to a lot of people, but a lot of people who are like our age or younger, they don't again, watch it. It, they don't watch it. It's that whole thing where, like, if the year has a 19 at the beginning of it, they're yeah, just they're not like, interested. It's too old. This isn't for your eyes. Yeah, exactly. Meanwhile, Hellraiser has some of the most terrifying visuals ever. Uh, oh, <laughs> like, man. Some of the best visuals ever. Also, some of the best lines. Jesus wept. The, the design of the Cenobites, the, like, practical effects for all the gore, and what have you, it's it's so terrifying. Like, Hellraiser set the stage for a lot of like, pr some call it prop horror, but like, you know, practical effect horror moving forward. And mm -hmm. with good reason, that movie's terrifying. Come to daddy. Oh my God. I think I'm gonna start, I'm just gonna start mine off and get the thing out of the way. We're gonna draw a little bit of everybody's blood. We're gonna find out who's the thing. I mean, I just, I, I got, yeah. I, anytime I can, I recommend yeah. the thing. Yeah, you gotta absolutely. recommend the thing. You the thing to. is my favorite movie ever made. In my opinion, just like the, it, it's everything I want in a, in a horror film of like deception, great practical effects, beautiful score, amazing acting. I mean, it's just like, it's fucking great. Wilford Brimley in that movie is just my, my, my idol. One of my buddies was joking me today about the scene where he's like in the hut outside. He's like, let me back in. I want to come back in. They're like, I just, no. Just let me inside. I'm normal. I can be I trusted. I'm <laughs> but we were, we were wanting to make like an edit to where it's like you hear like whatever meme is going on. Like, like we were going to, he's like uh, li listening or like watching Big Mouth in the background. You like hear it in the TV. He's in the, in the shed. He's like, let me back in. I'm normal. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> you see Kurt, Kurt Russell shut the door. <laughs> <laughs> that, but, I like that. That'd be pretty good. Yeah, I thought that'd be a fun, uh, a fun edit. But uh, the John, I mean, John Carpenter is like one of my favorites. I mean, he's just so fucking good, and it's just the ending of that movie is perfect. It's just like, a, in my opinion, a perfect movie. There's like some weird stuff. There's like some stuff that like it looks a little dated uh, in terms of like some of the stop motion stuff they did. But other than that, like the practical effects, I don't. In, in my opinion, I don't think those practical effects have ever been topped or will ever be topped. It's it, it's one of my favorite movies ever. If you haven't seen it, because so many people are like, oh, I hear it's good. People usually say, oh, it's a good movie, and they've never seen it. Take time to watch it. It's a fucking great movie. Man, I, I, what I mentioned with uh, Hellraiser of how like it set up a lot of prop horror. The thing is like the golden standard. There's few movies I would consider perfect, but I have watched that movie so many times and get something new out of it every time. Just the way they slowly get picked off, the way the distrust builds up. It's just, it's poetry. Every aspect of that movie works. It's so good. It's so good. And there's just like, God, Kurt Russell, Wilfred Brimley, Keith David, just so many good performances. And it's just, you know, the same thing that I like where it's a, it's a very simple set, you know, isolated kind of creepy fucking awesome thing and i love ambiguity and horror i like whenever someone effectively puts you in an experience where you don't know how something happened but you're just like along for the ride and they do not explain anything like other than that and you let letting your the viewer's imagination is like 10 million times more powerful than any other movie where you know somebody spells out why or how something happens i think it's just that that's that's just right up my alley i love it Today's video is sponsored by Established Titles. Now, I've been called many things in my life, but Lord is not one of them. Until now. That's right, you little peons, and I have the certificate to prove it. And it's all thanks to Established Titles. 
Established Titles is a wonderful conservation project that allows you to buy as little as one square foot of land in the Scottish woodlands. Every order comes with an official certificate and plot number. And with every order placed, Established Titles plants a tree. It's a fun way to help out a great cause. Give it as a gift or buy a package for yourself and help out the environment. Everybody wins! You can even put your new title on a credit card. The first 200 people that use my link and purchase a title pack will be placed right next to mine. Together, we can create a meat kingdom. Who knows? Maybe one day we'll take a field trip and see them all lined up together. It's not gonna happen. It'll be like that scene from Braveheart, except without that racist guy. So what do you say? You looking to increase your status and do a little good? Go to EstablishedTitles.com slash PapaMead and use promo code PapaMead to support the channel and get 10% off your purchase. Thank you to Established Titles for sponsoring the video and back to the video. So the next movie uh, for Monster Flicks has to be The Blob. Oh! <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. One yeah. of the be well, one of one of the best remakes ever. Yeah, Easy. absolutely. Uh, the thing itself was a remake, and I would say that's probably the best remake ever. But Blob 1988's up there. Uh, one of the things I love about monster movies is it gives the director and the creators the opportunity to be ridiculous. Right? They don't have to r remain in the bonds of like what is technically you know or anatomically accurate. So in the Blob, when you have essentially a giant cell that eats people, you can make it as gross and as bloody and as over the top as you want. And the Blob from 1988 does exactly that. There's this very niche subcategory of horror movies called Melt movies that specifically the horror derives around the concept of people being literally melted or like torn down into basic parts and the blob is like the best example of that I've, i feel watching people melt uh watching their bodies be assimilated and it it like does not hold any punches no regardless of who is the victim it is bloody it is brutal the whole time it's great yeah there's a couple even just some like children death scenes in this movie which is very rare yeah yeah, and it, they're not just like, oh, the kid dies off screen. No, like, it's the brutal. Kid, <laughs> the kid melts. The it kid is fucking insane. gets, yeah, dissolved. <laughs> I mean, the motherfucker dies for real. <laughs> <laughs> My, my next one, I don't know why, it's not really similar. Well, I guess it's a, another great practical effect movie and by one of my other favorite directors is uh, Slither. What the fuck? First off, James Gunn is just such a fucking great director. I love, love, love him. This movie is so fucking weird and fun and like has like some weird like oddly sexual themes to it and so there's just about space maggots i think that's why maybe i thought blob or the thing is just another element of like space coming down to earth and terrorizing a town um and this one it's just yeah people fleeing from giant you know basically leeches but the the effects are so cartoony the way people die are so cartoony like uh the woman in the barn or whatever, who's just like basically a giant ball. It's just really fun. James Gunn is a great fucking director, and this is just uh, this is one of those movies I feel like people look over because it kind of, I feel like it's that early two thousands feel where people are like, oh, this is probably gonna be like a cheap, cheap kind of stupid movie with slugs or whatever. But it's really really fun. I think people should check it out. It like finds itself in that niche we were talking about, right? Where you have the freedom now that you're operating outside of reality to go all out with it. And that creates some of the best, like, honestly, cosmic horror that we can get a hold of. Some of the best, like, modern horror authors, like Junji Ito, but capitalize on that. Like, okay, I made this world, I made this monster, it can do whatever I say, and I'm going to make it gross. And uh, I love it whenever they, like, go through with it, like, with Slither. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, the, the, the nice ambiguity factor of just being, like, this is the rules I'm giving you. It doesn't matter how we got here. That's just, like, the world we live in. And mm -hmm. this is like the experiences they have. And I think that's always really fun because, you know, audiences aren't stupid. They they like that. You know, I, that's why I, I get so frustrated when you see movies where it's like everything is being so over explained and just like everything has to make logistical sense when it's like, no, just throw us in. I want to have fun. Yeah. 
Let me have put, fun. Yeah, put me in the deep end. I'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <gasps> oh. oh my god, baby, what happened to your face? It's just a bee stink. A movie that stuck with me both because of where I like live, that it's a personal tear, but also just because it, it's so good. The Descent. Oh man, that, that's like <laughs> that's one of the movies that fucked me up so much when I was a kid. That movie fucked me up so bad. Dude, okay, so there's like there's different kinds of you know like scary movies, quote unquote, right? There's movies that focus on scare, like when you're watching it, you get creeped out, like creepy faces, jump scares, what have you. And there's movies that focus on fear, the concepts or things you're dealing with, like stay with you. Descent is like a perfect middle line, right? Because Whenever you're watching it, you're like, ah, oh, like the claustrophobia, the actual like blood and gore, like the blood pool scene near the end of the movie, brutal. insane, oh, yeah, brutal, the bones and everything. So like that is momentary scare. But then once the movie's over, you're thinking about it and you're like, man, no, those hallways were pretty tight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's fucking crazy. Uh, it, and also the way the tension builds into it, like when you take some of the end scenes out of context, you're like, man, this is over the top and like just insane, which it is. But in the context of the movie, it never breaks the feeling of this is real or this is like a real threat these characters are facing. Mm. So because of that, it lures you into this scenario where these barbaric situations are happening, but you're still invested in the character's well-being because they never lost that. Uh, so as like twists and turns happen with the characters in the film, it's still impactful in spite of everything that's going on. And it's really hard for horror movies to keep amping up the pressure and still make you care about the people, especially monster movies. They always get to the point where you're just like, oh, well, here's the walking buffet. <laughs> right, and I think that the protagonist in this movie is incredibly strong. Like, I, I, I feel like I was rooting for her the whole time. Like, yes, yeah. Really, really, really great protagonist. I think, like, you know, you already touched on, I'm claustrophobic as, as all hell. I mean, like, mm -hmm. extremely claustrophobic, so... Yeah, even Spelunky. I fucking hate when I go on TikTok and I see, like, there's this one skinny man and his son who, like, Spelunk through caves. And he's like, yeah, this is a tight fit. And, like, you're like, why? Why are you down there? So get the fuck out of there. But the movie is also kind of effective of, like, it, you know, I feel like you get kind of a little bit of, like, you know, are these humanoid people who have just been, like, inbreeding in the dark down here and, like, all these kind of weird things of like these creatures to me never really felt like otherworldly or something mm -hmm. it kind of felt like some people who got trapped down there and they've just been like having children and they're like very you know they're all blind and they just hear by sound mm -hmm. it's fucking crazy there's the pit where they definitely you you are under the assumption too that they leave at night and they probably like drag deer or like mm -hmm. some kind of animals into the cave and stuff it's just uh which is really terrible it's <laughs> like, horrible <laughs> horrible these giant trapdoor spiders that just roam around the woods yeah. at night oh my word that that movie has like one of the best one of my favorite monster reveals the first like uh the first shot where the monster's standing behind the woman mm -hmm. uh, in the cave that's such a fun fun uh, reveal un under I the night vision love. camera yeah so yeah. good yeah, oh i good. love it it's such a good movie. I'm fine. I feel like I have to be this guy, and I feel like I, w I just want to recommend a classic, because like I said, people just don't watch enough of the classics. People have, you gotta check out The Creature of the Black Lagoon. <laughs> It's just like that's a good classic. Not gonna scare you by any means. Not no way in hell. We horror has come so far in like ninety years that this is <laughs> it's not gonna scare you. But the I think the I fucking love the costume. I like love the idea of this creature underwater. The film techniques they used back then were really kind of new and innovative. And like the fucking guy, the people are actually underwater in this like suit that the guy can barely swimming the guy fucking almost drowned like seven times during the movie 
But it's just awesome. It's just like one of the most iconic fucking like fish people. And I'm such a Lovecraft person. I just love fish horror for some reason. Fish horror? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fish horror. There's tons of fish horror. This is uh, uh, one of those movies. And I'm going to parlay that in as well because I said fish horror with Dagon which is a great Stuart Gordon movie from the year 2000. Which Dagon? Is, like the Dagon. Canaanite god? Yes, it was... What? Well, first off, let me go into... Stuart Gordon has done primarily nothing but Lovecraft movies. He likes taking Lovecraft short stories and turning them into movies. So Stuart Gordon did, like, Reanimator. He did From Beyond. And in the year 2000, he made Dagon, which is, like, a really cheap, kind of shitty fish horror movie, but it is, like, a staple of mine in B-horror. It's, uh, it's amazing, but it's, uh, about, it's mostly about H.P. Lovecraft's short story Shadows Over Innsmouth, but the movie's called Dagon, um, which, you know, in both of those movies, both, uh, have that, you know, Eldric God Dagon in it, but it's, uh, one hell of a ride. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh... I'm, I'm looking at the screenshots right now, and you've got uh, some explaining to do. <laughs> Yes, yes. Like I said, it is, uh, it's very cheap. It's very shitty, but it's like so fun. It's such a fun movie, but it's, uh, yeah, incredibly cheap, but very, yeah, very fun. I, you know, I don't have to fucking watch it. It's good. <laughs> it's a good one. What did you do? What are you, you got nuts? You fucking crazy? What's your next movie, sir? All right. So my next one, I'm going to go to a campy one now. Cause like I said, one of my favorite things about monster films is when you have a group of people holding something off, uh, fighting for their life, getting picked off one by one. But it's also fun whenever the creature is just something crazy out of this world. And one of the funnest concepts I've seen done with this idea is eight-legged freaks. Dude, did you piss your parents? We gotta go. We gotta get out of here. They're coming. Looks like the only thing going is you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow, yeah. Have, have you seen Eight Legged Freaks? Oh yes, the big. Okay. Uh, I, I remember I watched it back in the day because when I was a kid, I was a fan of Scream, and they have Dewey from Scream, and yep. he's the sheriff or whatever in this movie as well. Yep. He's always a cop. Why is he always a cop? Uh, I don't know. Dave, David Arquette just he's got a thing for. Uh, I played The Quarry recently, which is the uh, choose your own story game, and he played a uh, camp counselor, which is essentially a child cop. So that's a child cop. <laughs> it's I, a child I, I, cop. I would I would definitely classify that as child cop for sure. That was also like uh, Eight Legged Freaks was like one of Scarlett Johansson's first movies yeah very young very young i think that it was before i want to say it was even before fucking uh what was the bill bill uh murray movie that he, she was uh, lost, lost in, in translation, translation. Yeah. yeah which was also a young she was really young there too because yeah this movie wow 2002 man i'm old i'm getting old <laughs> i'm but getting old eight, uh eight-legged freaks is about a small town where chemicals spill into the water and makes giant spiders and that's it uh, that, that's like the whole that's plot. all you need that's all that's literally all you need because the bulk of the movie and what makes it fun is these townspeople getting killed by these waves of giant spiders uh all these different kinds of, like jumping spiders attack people orb weavers attack people eventually everyone holds up together and starts shooting and blasting them away and it becomes a cool final stand movie um uh, it's very campy it knows it's campy there's a scene where a spider tackles someone and the, he tries to punch the spider, so the spider starts using its like front feelers to hit him, and it literally plays like the stock punching sound effect. Oh, oh, you... Like spams it as the spider's hitting him. Oh like, yeah. Like the movie oh, yes. knows what it is, uh, and that makes it even better. So it's fun, it's campy. Uh, I watch it all the time for a good laugh. It, it's great. And, and, and there is some horror to it. Like, you know, there's people webbed up and obviously being attacked by giant spiders. That's going to scare someone, but it has fun with the concept too. Is is there any is there any practical effects in spiders? Are there, if, if I remember correctly, they're all CG, right? They are. Yes, I, I yeah, do yeah. not remember any practical effects yeah, in no, that I, movie. I, I, feel like, I feel like my wife... I remember when I watched it, I was like, whoa, but I feel like there's no way in hell it holds up for CG. I, I, it makes me want to go watch it again. I have to, because yeah, yeah the so concept I, is I'll, so I'll, fun. I'll, but I'll spoil it for you. It's not hold up. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> At all. Oh, fuck. Yeah, that's part of the love, though. That's oh, a, well, like yeah, you see yeah. these the, these spiders who for some reason the lighting does not match the position they're in. When, when, when I tell you that when you watch Dagon, and believe me, <laughs> when you will, 
Dagon, it's, it, it does it. You know, you're going to think visually, this is this is dated, and you would be correct. Oh, boy. I can't wait. <laughs> it's, I'm looking forward to it. One of my personal favorites, too, is It Follows, which I think is... Mm. I, I'm, I'm going to classi classify that as a monster movie. We're going to a place that doesn't have more than one exit. Basically, you have to have sex with somebody to pass on this monster, and if you don't, you, like, this monster can disguise itself as whoever, and it comes and kills you. It's just a really fun way to, like, use STDs and, um, as, like, a horror, as, like, a horror device, and it's, uh, just really, really fun. Mm -hmm. Also, great fucking soundtrack, but I remember I saw this in theaters the year it came out, I want to say, like, 2014, 2015, Surprised the fuck out of me. Really, really fun. The, you know, and it... It, it gets mis mixed signals. I know some people are like, Oh, the ending, or how they deal with the monster, or whatever. It's fun. I think it's just a... It's, it's a good old... It's a good old time. I enjoy it. It Follows is a great movie. Uh, it's held up. Uh, I like the horror. I like that there's a lot of nuance to it. Like, um, I didn't realize until, like, the third time I watched it, the... The th person the it appears as at the end of the movie whenever they're in the pool uh that is her father okay and yeah you can i don't think I caught that you can tell because earlier in the movie she holds up a picture of her father and she never addresses it but a tentative viewer realizes that it's now manipulating like trying to get, get to the people closest to her little touches like that go a long way uh, but yes i'm a big fan of the movie Gregory, okay? Craig. All right, so uh, sticking with my theme of monster movies and last stands, uh, I've got to go with what's probably my favorite zombie movie of all time. Uh, I'm not saying it's the best. I think the best would probably be Train to Busan. Um, okay. That's a great film, but my favorite is the 2004 remake of Dawn of the Dead. Oh boy, uh, Zack Snyder. So, Zack Snyder. When that, when that guy does it right, he does it right. Like Watchmen, uh, 300, when he like takes the style that he's made his own, and like can effectively imply it, I think it goes a long way. The the there probably has never been or will ever be a better first ten to fifteen minutes of a zombie movie. Such a such a beautiful effective first like ten minutes to totally get you in, totally invested into the movie. Uh, and and what's crazy is it capitalized on what I think a lot of people want to see because zombie movies are still fun to me. I know people got burned out on them. I never got burned out. I still love zombie games. I still love zombie media. Mm -hmm. uh, I, it, it's just fun. The idea of these endless waves of things to fight back against. Um, but especially in video games, we're all like, okay, shopping malls. Those are cool. Uh, let's, let's like make a final stand on the rooftop. That's cool. And like, you know, all these different ideas that never really get done in film, but uh, Dawn of the Dead did it. Like they all go, and I, I realize it was based off the original uh, George A. Romero's movie of course. from '76, which is another great film. Uh, but to, in 2004, they were able to make these massive hordes. Uh, I love the scene where they're on the roof shooting celebrity zombies. That's hilarious. Yeah, um, like using the whiteboard to be like shoot Burt yeah. Reynolds or whatever. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's so fun. So funny. It's great. Uh, like it, it knows to have fun with itself. But then at the same time, the end scene where they're going through the sewers and they're like firing back at them. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it's like something out of Left 4 Dead, uh, and it's visceral. It's in your face, and I, I love it. Uh, I love Dawn of the Dead. What are we gonna do about that truck? We're not gonna do anything about that truck. There's people in it. Yeah? And how do you know they're not all fucked up like everybody else out there? Well, for one thing, they're driving a truck. Oh, and shooting guns. And I think that translates well into my next recommendation for the, uh, for Monster, which is the sadness. Ama. You got game which is a great mm. Taiwanese horror film. I, I'm buddies with the director, Rob Jabez. First off, have you seen it? I have not, uh, but you've got me with all kinds of stuff from talking about it to you know Man. the director, interesting. Yeah, let me tell you something. 
It is one of the most visceral, over the top, crazy fucking films out there. It's shot beautifully, but it's like, you know, and you could say it's not really like a zombie film. It's like more of like a infection film, but I mean, a lot of it is very zombie-esque, but it's all basically people are subjected to a disease that like basically like makes them basically act on their most primal urges. So there's like a lot of like, you know, sexual content in the film and like very like murdering and all kinds of crazy stuff. But just it's so it's so good in its practical effects. It's so simple and effective with how they depict zombies where it's like literally they just they start to cry their eyes go black and it's just kind of like some swollenness around their eyes but it's just this bloodbath it's such a fucking gore fest it's really really fun man and it's uh if you have shutter i would definitely watch this film it's fucking really really good and he's a good buddy of mine too so you should watch it yeah we're moving into free for all free for all the last week of Oct of october i always feel like it should just be a little hodgepodge a little a little brewing pot of just some stuff that you like that maybe you couldn't throw into the weeks before. This is just where, you know, this is your desserts. This is your nice little, your, your nice little tasty treats to end your spooky month on. All right. Very cool. So I am going to give uh, a trilogy, actually. Uh, they're all very short movies because I think what's often overlooked in a lot of horror circles is the idea of the couch or the party horror movie, right? Because uh, take a movie like The Witch, for example. Fantastic horror, you know, great tension and build up. But if you're inviting, you know, your friends over and you're going to have popcorn and talk during the movie, maybe not the best thing to pop on. It takes a bit more, you know, attention to actually be appreciated. So there's something to be said for movies that are just fun, right? Uh, like like they're creepy and I, that's not to say they're bad or devoid of merit but like you can watch the movie and the scares are keeping it rolling and there's creepy stuff there and one of the best movies I found for this is the Hell House series seriously Both. what the fuck was that yeah, yeah, that's fun. Yeah, I agree. I, th I think Hell House, uh, it's, I wouldn't really say it's underrated because a lot of people know about it, surprisingly. It, it's grown in notoriety for sure. Yeah, it, it's kind of become a cult classic in a way. So the concept of Hell House is a group of people by a haunted house uh, that it turns out there was ritualistic stuff that happened and then things start to go wrong. Uh, Hell House has a lot of good scares, a lot of creepy visual effects. So as the film goes on, uh, the, the tension, well, not just the tension, the visual scares and like what's happening, these people keep amping up uh, and it has a good payoff. It's got good horror to it and it's a great movie to watch with friends. Uh, there's three of them and having watched all three of them a couple times, you're honestly good to go with any of them. You can have friends over during Halloween and go through the whole series and have a great time. So I highly recommend Hell House. Just I'm off take... today. No, there is no off day. All right, this is everyday work. What do you, come on. All right, all right, all right. I'm out of here. Just a little kiss real quick. My first free for all, it's funny that you brought up record because there's something similar, not as, I wouldn't say it's as good, but it's an Australian film called The Tunnel. What, what, what? Jesus Christ. It's also about an investigative crew um, and they are basically trying to figure out why the, this like local government is like hiding this like abandoned uh, subway track or whatever. And it's like an extremely fun way of using corridors. It has it has a feel of like in a haunted asylum kind of thing because of just like some of these older rooms and tight knit corners and stuff. But the tunnel is a really fun found footage film that like you know it uses its scares in a very fun way you know having the idea of like being trapped underground and you're so close to the surface to escape but you can't is a really fun uh is a really fun uh movie it's kind of hard to find it i think you can watch a kind of compressed version on youtube i was lucky and found a blu-ray copy of it but um yeah i don't know it was uh it's just it's a great movie i, I haven't heard many people who have seen it and this is one of those times where you kind of just stumble upon it and you're like oh i'll give it a try and it turns out to be like a really fun movie so Definitely, uh, very fun to, to watch. Get down there, you asshole. <laughs> I will go with what is probably the single best Halloween movie. 
And by that I mean the best movie to watch on Halloween. And that is Trick or Treat. Oh yeah. Yeah, like the, the, what I mentioned earlier, like couch movies, couch horror. Um, it is a group, it's several different groups of people, kind of told as an anthology, although they do connect with each other, uh, about these different groups of people on Halloween night, and it's all different aspects. You got ghosts, you got killers, you got werewolves, vampires, all of it. It's all the stuff that makes the season creepy on the night of All Hallows Eve. Uh, and it's fun in some scenarios, it's bloody in others, and it's a great movie with a great Halloween mascot, and you can't go wrong. Like, I've watched that the past two years, I believe, on Halloween, and it's a banger every time. So, Trick or Treat, if you're looking for a movie to turn on at a Halloween party, Trick or Treat is it. Exactly. I was just getting ready to say that. But don't forget to open with the eyes! And my next recommend uh, is something I would say that's kind of similar. I wouldn't say it's as effective for sure, but I always like to recommend House of a Thousand Corpses to yeah. uh, people during yeah. the Halloween season. Hurry, fucking Moses, y'all get the fuck out of here! Clowny, keep your paws where I can see Yeah, it. don't move! I'll blast the holes the size of a, a Kansas City watermelon through your ugly ass bozo face! What the fuck is that supposed to mean? I am not the biggest Rob Zombie fan when it comes to horror movies. Uh, the amount of like, you know, white trash screaming and stuff and everything like that, <laughs> it gets it gets so grating to me. But I think it, I think his like style and his vision, and I think the budget was there too. With uh, when House of a Thousand Corpses came out, whenever he was like really on top of the world with his music and stuff, and he got that big Universal Studios budget, and I think it's just like a really fun introduction to all these characters and to like, we get like a fun serial killer vibe mixed in with like some weird, like weird, like mythology, backstory mythology that you have. And the whole thing just reeks of classic universal, like horror aspects along with like deranged till have eyes, hillbilly kind of like disgusting, you know, over the top sexual stuff that, uh, I think is, it's just classic. I just think it, it, it to me, that was like, his vision fully em embodied and I think you know he's done a couple of interesting things since then like I really don't like Devil's Rejects or any of that other shit whatever but like Lords of Salem I thought was an interesting take or like interesting vision that I don't think it really went all the way for me but I think House of the Thousand Corpses to me it was just one of those times where it's right on the fucking money right 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 on the money for for fun hillbilly uh, scares. Yeah, I agree. It's fu it's very fun. Uh, the obviously, and he does it on purpose. His movies are very campy, but it's in a very meaningful manner. I knew she was crazy for the second we fucking picked her up. Okay, that's it. Let's get out of this fucking nut house. So my last recommendation is a movie that I think fits all categories. It is found footage. It is monster. It is uh, supernatural, folk, it has all the elements, and it's the perfect movie to watch by yourself, with a partner, or with a whole group of friends. And that is the entire VHS series. So the VHS movies, which a lot of you are probably familiar with, uh, 1, 2, Viral, and uh, 80, 94, right? 94? Mm -hmm. 94. 94, yeah. All four of those movies are anthology films that are about various groups of people finding tapes they're not supposed to that contain some kind of scary story within them. And they're interconnected loosely, but they're built in such a way that you can watch a single short and get the entire story of that short. Um, 
And because of that, they're, like I mentioned earlier, great for parties. But at the same time, there is kind of these visual Easter eggs and rewards for people who are paying attention, who can string the story together. And even the worst movie of the series, VHS Viral, has some very fun moments and some very uh, either corny moments or interesting scares to watch with friends. What I love about the VHS series is you can get that, and then you can go to VHS 2 and watch Safe Haven, which is one of the creepiest shorts I've ever seen. Uh, and get freaked out and then you can go and uh, go to the first one and watch something about a serial killer and then you can go to 94 and watch a militia that has a giant vampire monster and it's so varied it has every aspect of horror that you could imagine in every tone that you could imagine uh, and I'm a massive fan it's really fun I mean how would you rank them actually I'm kind of curious out of the four what would you how would you place them I, I would rank them from worst to best would be viral 194 2 Here's the thing, VHS 2, Safe Haven is the best like short film out of all of them, I, I in agree. my opinion. I agree. But 94 had so many fun, like I love Ratma. I love- Ratma's fantastic. I love the fact, like the first person, like weird, like almost like Tetsuo kind of Iron Man, first person experience yes. we get with yeah. that. Which is the, uh, made those by two, the same director Yes, I was as, about to say that. Yeah. Yep, yep, same yep, guy exactly. made both of those. And uh, the, the use of vampire blood being explosive, and it's like it's like this weird like militia yeah, cult that's using yeah. that. I think that the there was just a lot of fun. It puts ninety four at the top for me, even though I know objectively Safe Haven from VHS two is definitely the best. I just fucking love VHS ninety four. I just it, it's it was so fun, such a fun experience watching it, and Ratma. Mm. Love Ratma. The Ratma's so good. Time to see if you're welcome in the new world. It's not for me to answer evil for evil. We leave that to the wrath of our new god. The last one I'm going to recommend, um, and, you know, man, I got a list here. I'm wondering which one I want to, what's the last one I want to recommend? You know what? I'm gonna fucking I'm gonna go on a limb, and I'm not even gonna I'm I'm gonna recommend Van Helsing with Hugh Jackman. Oh, the great Van Helsing! You're a deranged psychopath. We all have our little problems. Whoa! <laughs> I did not yes. expect that. <laughs> I'm going to recommend Van Helsing with Hugh Jackman. I think if you're in the Halloween season and you don't watch Van Helsing with Hugh Jackman, you're doing something wrong. This movie is so fucking dumb and fun, but has the best transformation of a werewolf uh, from CGI perspective. It's very fun. And it's like a, a campy, weird action movie with like really good like uh, vampire designs. Really fun werewolf designs, and I just love the aesthetic of like old Transylvania kind of stuff. I, I always have a very a soft spot in my heart for Van Helsing. It's a it, it's a underappreciated movie in my opinion, and uh, it's it, it's a lot of fun. It's a, it's a lot of fun for me. I, I can vibe with it. I appreciated that we started out with Ari Aster, Hereditary, and we ended. On yep. Hugh Jackman's Van Helsing. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, we have a wide spectrum. That we have a little bit of. We have a little bit of for everybody. I think. I cannot screw the boats. This is gonna hurt. I am accustomed to pain. Let's know you're alive. Well. That's our recommendations. I, I mean, like, we have to have given enough stuff for to fill up your whole October. Yeah. So be sure and follow along. You know, maybe put them in your own order and let us know what you think of them. Uh, and be sure to check out Mr. Windigoon's channel. It's fantastic. If you like everything horror and creepy, anywhere from, you know, literature to internet horror, you know, it's it's all over the fucking place. It's like, uh, I always say to people, because they're like, oh, what would you, how would you describe your channel? I think it's like comparable to if you like the uh, down the rabbit hole documentary kind of stuff hmm. on uh, YouTube. I always think it's really fun and comparable to that, to where it's like, you get to learn a bunch of new shit, really fun editing, incredible research, 
You're a peach. You know that? Aw, that's so sweet. Thank you. He's that's a, one of the most peach. glowing reviews I've had. He's, that's he's so a sweet. Peach. Thank you. Well, I can say to everyone, having talked to him on and off the air, uh, that Papa Meat is an incredibly kind creator. No! Uh, very, I'm sorry. Uh, no, we what, can't, what, we yeah, can't, he, we can't right. have that. Hold on, that, I'm, the I'm illusion's evil. missing. He hates Koreans. That's what no! it was. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. 